Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Theresa McDonough. I'm uh, from King's College Hostel in London. I'm here today with my colleague Wilfred Mullins and we're going to be talking a little bit about congestion and diuretic therapy and heart failure. Congestion is featured a lot at this meeting and we know that congestion in acute heart failure is harmful, particularly with the end organ damage that it can, can lead to. Wilfred, do you have any yeah. thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah, I think we're focusing a lot on congestion mm -hmm. in this meeting because it's really an important mm -hmm. sign. It's also very prognostically mm -hmm. important to recognize congestion early on. Yeah. Now we also know that there is a real underappreciation of risk of our patients to develop congestion mm -hmm. and to actually be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And the paradigm study told us that about 20% of our patients have a risk to be dead or hospitalized within two years of the trial, yeah. which is clearly underappreciated by the most people, I think. And what's even worse, that once you've been admitted with heart failure and you've been discharged with ongoing congestion, the risk to be re-hospitalized or to die goes up to 60% at one year. Yeah. And recently, during this meeting, Professor Jean-Cell presented the data on the Europe on the Euro registry suggesting again a very high rate of readmission mm -hmm. if that congestion was not resolved during that initial admission. So recognition of congestion, early treatment and especially getting rid of the, all of the congestion is very important to improve the outcomes of our heart failure patients. So obviously our main strategies for decongesting patients at the moment in the acute and indeed in the chronic setting revolve around diuretic therapy. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the acute setting, what do you think would you be your advice from the trials we've seen and the evidence yeah. we've got about the best use of diuretics in acute heart failure? Yeah, well, yeah we know that the, that the organs are very sensitive to congestion yeah. and the particular, the most sensitive organ is the kidney. Yeah. And we know that as soon as you have congestion, meaning an increase in central venous filling pressures, mm -hmm. that the kidney starts to retaining more sodium. Mm -hmm. So an appropriate use of diuretic therapy is essential to actually try to treat congestion. Yeah. Recently, HFA came up with a consensus document illustrating how to use diuretics wisely. Yes. And there are two key, thar two key things that I want to emphasize. The first thing is an early treatment. Mm -hmm. There is this dorm, door to balloon time in yeah. the PCI world, yeah. but we also have this door to diuretic time. Mm -hmm. So an early recognition and an early treatment within the first hour of admission with an IV loop diuretic is essential. Mm -hmm. And then with regards to dosing, we actually propose that if you have if you are diuretic naive, mm. you just use one milligram of bimetanide or 40 milligrams of furosemide right. IV as a bolus. Yep. But if you already are on one milligram, you use the double dose. Yeah. So that's the early on start. Yeah. And then it comes down to what do you do afterwards? Yeah. Because the early treatment is, is step one, mm -hmm. but then it comes down to what are you going to do? How are you going to reassess that patient? And historically, physicians just go back to see that patient the next day. Mm -hmm. But we're going to emphasize now an early assessment mm -hmm. of what you've been doing. And we propose that you do that within the first hour after a diuretic therapy. Mm -hmm. There's no use for waiting a day to yeah. look at it because the diuretic has weaned off after six hours. Yeah. So the early assessment comes down to early looking at the diuretic output, the volume output. Mm -hmm. and that should be at least 100 to cc urine per hour or even better looking at sodium, how much sodium is it going to come out. You can easily take a, a little bit of urine, send it to the lab and assess this urinary sodium output. This is the spot sodium concept. Spot, yeah. Yeah, spot yeah. urinary sodium content and we propose that to, to be at least 50 max per liter. Mm -hmm. And if you're reaching that and you still have ongoing congestion, you can repeat the similar dose of the loop diuretics after six hours. Okay. If you don't reach that target of 100 cc urine per hour or 50 max sodium per liter, then you have to increase the dose until you reach that target. Okay. Now turning to the chronic setting, we're very aware from many registry studies um, that chronic use of loop diuretics uh, seems to be harmful. Uh, we know that the mortality goes up with the dose of loop diuretic and that it is an independent of other markers of uh, severity of heart failure. We're not sure why is it the deterioration in renal function which accompanies mm -hmm. the loop diuretic is it the um, the ramping up of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so there's a, there are a lot of strategies now uh, to think about how we should use diuretics in chronic heart failure I noticed yesterday there was a randomized mm -hmm. controlled trial 
of reduction mm. or stopping of diuretic therapy in patients who were with mild chronic heart failure, MYHA classes one to two who were on small doses mm -hmm. of loop diuretics, furuzumide 40 milligrams, and it seemed to be safe to yep. stop the diuretic, at least in the short term. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that? I think it was a very interesting yeah. trial. Yeah. Uh, that was done really well mm -hmm. in Brazil. It was yeah. multi-center, randomized, double-blind. But the, the downside was they assessed the stopping of the diuretic in patients who were only on 40 milligrams yeah. of furosemide. Yeah. So these were not the really at-risk patients. Yeah. But however, it was a clear signal that you could do that without harm. Yes. And we know from registries that sometimes there's an inappropriate high utilization of the loop diuretics. And there are suggestions there that if you use it inappropriately high dosages, that that hampers the uptitration of the really important disease modifying drugs, the A's, the beta blockers. So it reassures us that if you don't really need the loop diuretic, it's safe to stop it and it might open up more room for the increase of the disease modifying yeah. therapy. There's also been a lot of focus over the years on the importance of sodium and low sodium as a prognostic mark in, acute heart f in chronic heart failure, and it's obviously associated with loop diuretic use. But there's been a lot of interest recently in hypochloremia, mm -hmm. and hypochloremia seems to, again, associated independently with yeah. uh, an adverse mortality in patients with chronic heart failure. Um, there, there's a lot of interest now in using chloride sparing diuretics or mm -hmm. carbonic ion hydrase inhibitors mm -hmm. um, and I believe you're, you're already conducting a large yep. trial of, of yep. acetazolamide. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of interest nowadays to come back to the treatment of congestion mm -hmm. and we know that loop diuretics mm -hmm. do play an essential role mm -hmm. but indeed like you were alluding to there are studies ongoing now to combine loop diuretic therapy with other therapies. Mm. And one of the promising things is, of course, the SCLT2 mm. inhibitors. Yep. There are trials ongoing yeah, with that yeah. respect. But there is also a very big randomized trial going on now in Belgium, which is called ADFOR. And ADFOR is also a multi-center double-blind trial comparing high-dose loop diuretic therapy plus placebo versus high-dose loop diuretic plus acetazolamide. Mm. Acetazolamide, as you know, is the oldest diuretic yeah. that we have. Yeah. It blocks a little bit of sodium uptake in the proximal parts of the kidney, and it actually boosts the effects of the loop diuretics. It's a trial, it's 520 patients, it's a really mm. large trial, and it's also supported by HFA. Good. Well, we look forward to seeing the results of that, yeah. and hopefully some new diuretic uh, therapeutic opportunities in the future. Yeah. Thank you, Wilfred. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.